Henry's Magic Box. The winter holidays are a very special time on Sodor. There are twinkling lights and snowy nights, and there are lots of surprises of all sorts and sizes. One morning, Henry was alone at Tidmouth Sheds. All the other engines were busy. Henry didn't want to be alone. He wanted to be busy like the other engines. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Henry was happy to see him. Good morning, sir. Henry, I have a very special special for you. Henry gasped. This was more than he could ever have dreamed of. Yes, sir. Ready to be really useful, sir. Henry, you must pick up a very special box from Brendam Docks. Next, you must take the box to Farmer McCall's field. Then, you must go and tell all the other engines to come to Farmer McCall's field at tea time. It's important, Henry, that you take great care of the box. I want to be proud of you. Henry Weistein. He was excited to have such an important job. Of course, sir. I will take the best care of the box. Then Sir Topham had left. Henry pumped his pistons and puffed proudly to Brendam Docks. Henry chuffed into Brendam Docks. This box is special, Henry. You have to take special care of it. I know, Cranky. That's why Sir Topham Hatt chose me for the job. And Henry chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer McColl's. Henry huffed in with his very special special. Please be careful with the box. Henry was worried for his box. It stood all alone. But he had to go and tell the other engines to come to the field at tea time. I must hurry. Henry huffed along. He saw Gordon ahead at the junction. But Henry didn't puff on to tell Gordon to be at the field at tea time. Henry was worried about his box alone in the field. First, I must go and check that my special box is safe. So, Henry hurried back to the field. Henry heaved to a stop. Then, he gasped. Now, there were five Christmas trees in the field, but no box. Fizzling fire boxes! Sir Topham Hatt won't be proud of me now. He will be cross. I must find the box. Henry steamed swiftly away. Then, Henry met Toby and James at a junction. Henry was too busy looking for the box to notice them. Hello, Henry. You look wobbly with worry. But Henry wasn't listening. He didn't tell Toby and James to be at the field at tea time. There was no box to see. Henry had to find it. Henry huffed hurriedly back to the field. Then his pistons almost popped. Bust my buffers! Now there are even more Christmas trees, but my very special box is still gone. I must find it. Henry juddered and jittered to the junction. Hello, Henry. Emily told us Sir Topham Hatt has given you a very special special. Henry gulped and gasped. He didn't tell Thomas and Percy to be at the field at tea time. There was no box for them to see. I must hurry. And Henry raced away. Henry looked everywhere for his box in fields and fenlands, sidings and stations. He couldn't find the box anywhere. Henry steamed sadly back to the field. Then he gasped. The empty field is now a forest of Christmas trees, and my special box still isn't here. Henry, 
I asked you to do a special job. You haven't done it. It's almost tea time, and the other engines aren't here. Henry wished weakly. His firebox flickered. I'm sorry, sir. I've let you down. I haven't looked after the very special box. It has disappeared. I haven't told any of the engines to be here, and you won't be proud of me. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Henry, you are an old and kind engine, but you worry too much. Where do you think the forest came from? Henry we steam and bubbled his boiler. He really wanted to find the answer. He didn't want Sir Topham Hatt to think he was silly. Then the answer flew into his funnel. The trees were in the box, sir. That's why the box isn't here, and the Christmas trees are. That's right, Henry. You looked after the box very well. Now, go and do the rest of your job. Henry smiled from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. We'll all be here at tea time. And Henry pumped his pistons and chuffed cheerfully away. First, Henry found Gordon and Emily. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please. No time to waste. Next, Henry steamed to Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas, Percy, and Edward were there. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please. No time to rest. Henry puffed into Knapford Station. His cheeks were as red as James's paintwork. James was talking to the station master. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please, James. No time to talk. At last, Henry found Toby at the water tower. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please, Toby. No time to take on water. And Henry wished away. He felt a very happy engine. Henry arrived back at Farmer McCall's field, just in time for tea time. All the other engines were there, but Sir Topham Hatt wasn't. Henry felt silly. Again. I'm sorry, everyone. I thought Sir Topham Hatt was going to be here. Perhaps I was wrong. Suddenly, the Christmas trees were a forest of twinkling lights. Red, blue, green, yellow. Sparkling in the darkness. The engines gasped in surprise. Fizzling fireboxes. This is wonderful! Then, there was the greatest surprise of all. Sir Topham Hatt stepped through the trees. He looked just like Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho! Happy winter holidays to all my really useful engines! Henry's eyes popped as wide as his wheels. This had been the best winter holiday special of all. Thomas in charge. It was a beautiful morning on the island of Sogo. All the engines were busy. Thomas was pleased. He was puffing to Brendam docks to shunt coal cars. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. Gordon was waiting with the express. Good morning, Gordon. Good morning, Thomas. I'm going to shunt these coal cars faster than fast. Gordon was happy he didn't have to shunt coal cars. I'm waiting for Sir Topham Hatt. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. Today is an important day. I am to meet the railroad inspector at Knapford Station. Then I will take him on a tour of the island. Our tour will end here at the docks. Thomas's boiler bubbled. The railroad inspector was a very important visitor. Thomas, 
I want you to be busy shunting cars when the inspector visits. Busy engines will please him most of all. Thomas's firebox fizzed with excitement. Bubbling boilers! I must make sure I shunt busier than ever. Thomas puffed over to the cars. Shunting cars, I do the best. I biff and bash and never rest. Suddenly, Thomas stopped. An idea flew into his funnel. Sir Topham Hatt said, busy engines will please the railroad inspector most of all. I must find more engines to shunt cars. Then the railroad inspector will be really pleased and Sir Topham Hatt will be really proud. So Thomas left the coal cars and he huffed happily out of the docks. Thomas puffed into Marin Station. Percy was there. He was waiting for his mail cars to be loaded. Good morning, Percy. I have some important news. The railroad inspector is coming to Brendam Docks. Sir Topham Hatt said it will make the inspector very pleased to see busy engine shunting there. Will you come? Percy was worried. I can't, Thomas. I have to deliver the mail. But shunting cars will please the inspector most of all and make Sir Topham Hatt proud. Percy wished and whooshed. All right, Thomas. I'll come with you. So Percy was uncoupled from his mail cars, and he puffed away with Thomas, just as the railroad inspector arrived with Sir Topham Hatt. They had come to see Percy busy with his mail cars, but the station was very quiet, and Percy was nowhere to be seen. Thomas and Percy didn't know this. They huffed happily into the quarry. Then they saw Mavis. Hello, Hello Mavis. Mavis. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Percy. You look busy. Suddenly, another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I can ask Mavis to come and help us shunt at the docks. I'm sure she'd like to do that. Puff on, Percy. I'll ask Mavis. So Percy steamed on to the docks, and Thomas clattered back into the quarry and up to Mavis. Mavis, I have some very important news. The railroad inspector is coming to Brendam Docks. Sir Topham Hatt said it will make the inspector very pleased to see busy engines shunting there. Will you come? Mavis wasn't sure. I don't think I can, Thomas. I have a lot to do here. Shunting cars will please the inspector most of all and make Sir Topham Hatt proud. Mavis wanted to make Sir Topham Hatt proud. All right, Thomas. I'll come with you. So Mavis left her slate cars and clattered away with Thomas, just as Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector arrived. They had come to see Mavis busy at work in the quarry. But the quarry wasn't busy. It was very, very quiet. The railroad inspector sighed, and Sir Topham Hatt couldn't believe his eyes. Thomas puffed back to the docks. Percy and Mavis were there. They had shunted a long line of cars. Thomas was pleased. Then he heard Gordon. Gordon is bringing Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector. Quick, Percy! Hurry, Mavis! We must be as busy as bees. The railroad inspector must be pleased, and Sir Topham Hatt must be proud. Then there was trouble. Percy shoved, Mavis shunted, and Thomas shouted. One, two, three, push! The coal cars bashed and biffed together. They juddered and jumped. Coal dust scattered and splattered everywhere. It covered the railroad inspector and Sir Topham Hatt. Then it flew down Gordon's funnel. Gordon spluttered and stuttered. Oh, the indignity. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, what have you done? Thomas felt terrible. The railroad inspector isn't pleased. Sir Topham Hatt isn't proud. Gordon can't whoosh at all. And it's all my fault. Thomas knew he had to chuff and puff to put things right. 
Sir, I will shunt Gordon to the steamworks. Victor will make sure his funnel is free and his firebox fizzes. Then, Gordon can take you on the tour of Sodor, and I can be really useful. Sir Topham Hatt was happy to hear this. Very well, Thomas. So Thomas heaved and hauled his hardest and shunted Gordon glumly away from the docks. At the steamworks, Victor was happy to welcome Gordon and Thomas. Well, Thomas, my friend, what have we here? Gordon grumped and groaned. Gordon's funnel is blocked with coal dust. He needs a clear funnel and a fizzing firebox. Then he has come to the right place. Gordon, please stop looking so unhappy. It's only your funnel we must fix, not your pistons that won't pump. Soon, Gordon's funnel was fixed. His firebox was firing, and he was ready and raring to take Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector on a tour of the island, and of all the really useful and very busy engines on Sodor. Thomas steamed swiftly back to the docks. He knew he had a lot of work to do. At the docks, Thomas started to shunt and shove. He huffed his hardest. Shunting cars, I do the best. I biff and bash and never rest. And he didn't see Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector arrive. They watched Thomas. Thomas, you are a really useful engine. I am very proud of you. And I am very pleased to see such a busy engine. I wasn't sure, but now I know Sir Topham Hatt's railroad is the best. Thomas beamed and gleamed. Sir Topham Hatt smiled and smiled with pride. Silly me, I was so wrong. I can shunt the whole day long. Never stop and never rest. A busy engine is the best. Being Percy. It was a sunny day on the island of Sodor. The engines were huffing and chuffing as they clickety-clacked along the tracks to Brendam Docks. The docks were busy. Frankie was creaky with crates, and Salty was shunting as Percy puffed in to collect the mail cars. Excuse me, Thomas. I excuse me, James. I must collect my cars on time. Thomas and James didn't move out of Percy's way. Percy tried again. Excuse me. If I'm late with my mail, I won't be a really useful engine. Just then, Gordon thundered into the docks. Out of my way! Express coming through! Salty moved out of Gordon's way. Percy saw this. I wish I was as loud as Gordon. Then everyone would chuff out of my way. Gordon collected his passengers. Then he huffed grandly away. Out of my way! Express coming through! This made an idea fly into Percy's funnel. I shall be as loud as Gordon. Then the other engines are sure to take notice of me. So Percy pumped his pistons and peeped as loudly as he could. Mail coming through! Thomas and James were surprised. Cinders and ashes! Flatten my funnel! It's Percy! And the two engines steamed swiftly out of Percy's way. Being loud made Percy feel very important. Percy liked feeling important. Now I shall be like Gordon. And Percy puffed proudly away. Percy clickety-clacked cheerfully. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. 
then, Percy saw Toby on the track ahead. Toby was steaming slowly. Percy had to steam slowly, too. Percy didn't want to steam slowly. So, an idea popped into his pistons. Out of my way! Mail coming through! Toby was so surprised, he juddered and shuddered to a stop. But he didn't puff out of Percy's way. Hello, Percy. Percy was disappointed. Then, Percy saw Gordon clatter past on the express line. Out of my way! Express coming through! Fizzling fireboxes! Gordon is fast. I shall be fast. So at the next junction, Percy switched tracks. Now, he was on the express line. And with a whoosh and a whoosh, Percy whistled away like the wind. And like Gordon, Percy felt important. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. Percy was going so fast on the express line, he raced straight through Maithwaite Station. Out of my way! Mail coming through! And left the mail sacks behind. Percy felt happy. He was fast. He was loud. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. At Marin Station, Percy saw Alicia Botti on the platform. She was going to have dinner with Sir Topham Hatt. Hello, Percy. I'm waiting for Gordon to take me to Knapford. Percy felt loud. Percy felt fast. Percy felt he was just as good as Gordon. He could take very important passengers, too. Step inside my cab, Miss Botti. I will take you there in no time. And Percy whooshed away with Alicia Botti to Knapford Station. Percy felt proud. He was fast, he was loud, and he had a very important passenger. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. And Percy raced and rattled right past Sir Topham Hatt. Then there was trouble. Gordon was roaring towards Percy. Out of my way! Express coming through! Out of my way! Mail coming through! But Gordon didn't get out of Percy's way. Suddenly, Percy was worried. Oh, my! Oh, no! Oh, help! Whoa! Whoa! Gordon swerved and swayed into a siding. He bashed the buffers and toppled off the tracks. Percy felt terrible. Now, he didn't feel bold at all. He felt very silly. I'm sorry, Gordon. I wanted to be you. I wanted to be fast and loud and very important. But now you can't puff at all. And it's all my fault. Gordon grumped. Hmm. Percy puffed. I will put all of this right by just being Percy. First, Percy took Alicia Botti to Sir Topham Hatt at Knapford. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, Miss Botti. I was trying to be Gordon, but I know that I'm only Percy. Next, he puffed into the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Excuse me, James. I made Gordon derail. Would you pull Rocky with me to help Gordon? 
I'm not strong enough alone. James sniffed. Then, he felt sorry for Percy. Very well. Buffer up. And together, they heaved and hauled Rocky to help Gordon. Thank you, James. Thank you, Rocky. I must hurry now to pick up the mail. And Percy huffed and chuffed to pick up the mail sacks. Slowly, Percy steamed away to Knapford. I'm really just Percy. I'm small and I'm green. I'm silly, I'm slow. I don't want to be seen. Percy chuffed into Knapford. Sir Topham Hatch was waiting. Percy's firebox fizzed with fear. Percy, why did you want to be Gordon? You're perfect being Percy, and that's what I want you to be. All the engines hooted and tooted in agreement, and Percy smiled. He was happy being Percy. Merry Winter Wish. It was the winter holidays on the island of Sodor. All the engines were excited. That evening, Knapford Station was going to be decorated with lots of winter lights. There were to be red lights, green lights, sparkling lights, and even snowflake lights. Thomas chuffed into Brendam Docks. All the engines were huffing and puffing busily. Salty rolled over. He had some important news. The engines liked important news. A ship will arrive from the mainland. It'll deliver a special winter holiday light for Knapford Station. It will be the biggest light of all. The engines wished with wonder. What's the light called? It is called the Star of Knapford. It's a very special star. If an engine passes by it, they can make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, their wish will come true. The engines were very excited. They couldn't wait to see the Star of Knapford. Just then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, you must wait here. You will have a special to deliver. Yes, sir. Thomas's axles tingled and trembled. A special was best of all. Thomas watched and waited. Then his special arrived. Shiver me timbers, Thomas. Look at that. Cranky lowered the star of Knapford gently onto a flatbed. The star sparked and sparkled. It looked wonderful. Thomas, you will pull the Star of Knapford to Knapford Station. Thomas was excited. He thought his pistons would pop. Bubbling boilers! I can't wait to tell my friends about my special. So Thomas buffered up to the Star of Knapford. Then he chuffed cheerfully off to Knapford Station. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. The star of Knapford shimmered on his flatbed. Then Thomas saw Percy chuff across the bridge above. An idea popped in Thomas's pistons. I'm sure Percy would like to make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, Percy's wish will come true, just like Salty said. So Thomas didn't take the track to Knapford Station. He puffed quickly to follow Percy. At last, Thomas was side by side with Percy. Percy, Percy, I have the star of Knapford on my flatbed. Percy was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Are you taking the star to Knapford Station? Yes, Percy. After you have made a wish. So Thomas pulled the star alongside Percy. Percy looked at the star. Then he closed his eyes tight. I made a wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas very happy. Now I must hurry. 
Next, Thomas saw Henry chuffing cheerfully. I'm sure Henry would like to make a wish. So Thomas wished and whistled away to follow Henry. Thomas raced after Henry, all the way to Tidmouth Sheds. Henry saw the star of Knapford on Thomas's flatbed. His boiler bubbled brightly. Oh, Thomas, you're lucky. Are you taking the star to Knapford? Yes, Henry, after you have made a wish. So Henry closed his eyes. I made my wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas even more happy. Hooray! I hope all my friends' wishes will come true. Thomas chuffed on to Knapford Station. James puffed quickly past. I'm sure James would like to make a wish. So Thomas raced after James. Thomas chased James all the way up Gordon's Hill. Then there was trouble. Thomas rattled and raced down the hill. Stop, James! Thomas's flatbed jiggled and joggled. The star of Natford wiggled and wobbled. Thomas was worried. Cinders and ashes, this is fast! Thomas applied his brakes. His wheels squawked and squeaked. Sparks flickered and flashed. At last, Thomas screeched to a stop. The star of Knapford flew high into the sky. It floated and flickered right over James and Henry and Percy. Then crashed with a crunch and a crack onto the track in front of Thomas. Thomas gasped. The star is broken. Now my friend's wishes might not come true. And it's all my fault. Thomas was upset. How can I get the star to Knapford now? Sir Topham Hatt and the other engines will be waiting. Thomas decided to make a wish. Maybe, just maybe, my wish will come true. Thomas closed his eyes. I wish that one of my friends would come to help me. Suddenly, Percy, Henry, and James whooshed towards him. Thomas's wheels wobbled with wonder. We saw the star of Knapford fly high in the sky. Are you all right, Thomas? Thomas looked at his friends. Then he looked at the broken star. I have been a very silly engine. I wanted you all to make wishes, so I didn't go straight to Knapford. I puffed too far and too fast. Please, will you help me? Thomas's friends were happy to help. Percy watched the star. Henry fetched workmen to fix it. And Thomas and James found Rocky. They huffed him quickly to the star. Soon, the workmen had fixed the star. Rocky lifted it carefully back onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you all. Now we must hurry to Knapford. So, together, the engines wished and they whooshed across Soto. They arrived just in time. Everyone watched as Rocky put the star of Mapford high above the station. Then they clapped and cheered as the star was switched on. It shimmered and shone brightest of all. Thank you, Percy, Henry, Rocky, and James. I'm very lucky to have you all as friends. I'm sorry that your wishes didn't come true. Mine did. I wished that we'd all be together under the star of Knapford. So did I. So did I. Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. His friend's wishes had come true. And that made Thomas happiest of all. 
Thomas and the Snowman Party. It was a snowy winter's day on the island of Sodor. The children were busy building the biggest snowman on Sodor. All the engines wanted to help the children. They were very excited. Thomas whooshed into the town square. Thomas's best friend Percy was there. So was James. Percy was smiling. Hello, Percy. You look happy. There's going to be a snowman party, Thomas. Farmer McCall's sheepdog will hunt the hat. The brass band will play. And Mr. Bubbles the Clown is going to do magic hat tricks. Thomas's firebox fizzed. That will be fun. Then Sir Topham Hat arrived. There is a lot to do for the snowman party. You are all to huff your hardest. Percy, you will collect cupcakes from the bakery. Right away, sir. <laughs> James, you must collect the special guests from Brendam Docks. Yes, sir. <laughs> and Thomas, you are to pick up an important package from Knapford Station. Thomas pumped his pistons proudly. Then he saw that the children looked sad. Our snowman has a carrot for a nose, coal for his eyes and mouth, and a brightly colored scarf. But he doesn't have a hat. Thomas didn't want the children to be sad. Thomas wanted to help the children. Don't worry. I'll find a hat for your snowman. So Thomas didn't go to Napper Station to pick up the important package. He chuffed cheerfully away to find a hat. Thomas clickety-clacked along the track. I'll look and look and find a hat. The children will be pleased with that. Thomas puffed past Farmer McCall's farm. Suddenly, he huffed to a halt. There was a big brown hat on a hay bale. Thomas's boiler bubbled with excitement. This would be a very good hat for the children's snowman. That would make them happy. So Thomas's driver put the big brown hat into Thomas's cab. And Thomas huffed happily away. Thomas clattered along the track. I found a hat! I found a hat! The children will be pleased with that. And Thomas wished on to pick up the important package. On his way to Napa, Thomas chuffed through Marin Station. Suddenly, he screeched to a stop. There was another big hat on the platform bench. Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. This hat is even bigger than the big brown hat. It will make the children even happier. So Thomas's driver put the big hat in Thomas's cab. I found a bigger, better hat. The children will be pleased with that. And Thomas puffed perkily away to pick up the important package. On his way to Napford, Thomas steamed through Maithwaite Station. Suddenly, he stopped. There was a very big hat sitting on some suitcases. It was blue and green and red and purple. It was the most colorful hat Thomas had ever seen. It was also the biggest. This hat would make the children happiest of all. So Thomas's driver put the big colorful hat into Thomas's cab. I found the biggest, brightest hat. The children will be pleased with that. And Thomas wished away to pick up the important package. Then Thomas chuffed to a junction. Toby was there. Toby was worried. The children have finished building their snowman, but they still don't have a hat for him. Thomas gasped. I have a hat for the children's snowman. I'll take it to them right away. Thomas pumped his pistons and raced to the town square. Hello, Percy. 
Hello, James. Percy and James look sad. Farmer McCall has lost his big brown hat. Now his sheepdog can't hunt the hat. The brass band haven't arrived. They're looking for the conductor's big hat. And Mr. Bubbles has lost his blue, red, green, and purple hat. Now he can't do any magic hat tricks. Thomas felt terrible. Cinders and ashes. I have all those hats in my cab. Percy and James were surprised. I wanted to help the children. I wanted to find a hat for their snowman. I wanted to make them happy. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Where is my important package, Thomas? I'm sorry, sir. Your important package is still at Knapford Station. I was trying to find a hat for the children's snowman. Now you don't have your package, and I have spoiled the children's fun. Sir Topham Hat looked cross. I'm sure I can put this right, sir. Very well, Thomas. So Thomas raced away as fast as his wheels could whir. Thomas puffed into Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hatt's important package was put into his cab, and Thomas raced quickly away. Next, Thomas reached to Farmer McColl's farm. Farmer McColl and his sheepdog were looking for his big brown hat. I have your hat, sir. The children are waiting for you at the snowman party. So Farmer McColl and his sheepdog jumped into Annie, and Thomas steamed swiftly away. Then Thomas puffed to Marin Station. The brass band were still looking for the conductor's hat. I have your hat, sir. All aboard for the town square and the snowman party. So the conductor and the brass band climbed into Annie and Clarabelle. And Thomas raced off. Thomas hurried to Maithwaite Station. Mr. Bubbles had been looking for his magic hat everywhere. I have your hat, sir. Hooray, Thomas. Now I can come to the party and do my magic tricks. So Mr. Bubbles bounced on board, and Thomas raced like the wind back to the town square and the children's snowman. Thomas chuffed into the town square. His axles ached, and his cheeks were rosy red. Here I am, sir. I have Farmer McCall and his sheepdog, the brass band, Mr. Bubbles, and your important package. Very good, Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt opened his important package. Inside was a brand new top hat. Excellent, Thomas. Just what I needed. And this, children, may be just what you need. A hat for your snowman. The children cheered. And Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. This was the grandest snowman on Sodor. Thomas's crazy day. The engines on the island of Sodor always like to be busy. They like to be really useful. And they like to have fun. One morning, Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the steamworks. He had come to see his best friend, Percy. Percy had popped a piston. Hello, Percy. Hello, Thomas. Thomas could see his friend look sad. Cheer up, Percy. Victor will soon have you fixed. But I can't be really useful here. And if I'm not really useful, I can't have fun. Percy, my friend. No more long faces, please. You look like a squeezed lemon on wheels. I will have you fixed by lunchtime. That made Percy smile. Don't worry, Percy. I'll puff back for you, and we can play then. So Thomas clickety-clacked off on the track to see Sir Topham Hat. 
Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for Thomas at Knapford Station. So were Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand, the Misty Island engines. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand giggled and jiggled. <laughs> Hello, Thomas. We're happy to see you. That's right. <clears throat> and I, Thomas, have a very important job for you. Thomas puffed with pride. Yes, sir. I want you to work with Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand at Brendam Docks. There is important freight to be loaded by the end of the day. You must show them how to be really useful engines. Of course, sir. Lead the way. We're right behind you, Thomas. That's right. <whistles> But Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzed. Oh my. I told Percy I would play with him. And I don't want to disappoint Percy. But if I play with Percy, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand will think I'm not a really useful engine. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can play with Percy and I can show Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand how to be really useful. I'm sure I can do that. That made Thomas's boiler bubble brightly. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand whistled and whooped. They had never seen anything as exciting as this. There are so many ships, so many tracks. That's right. Who's oh, he? This is Cranky. Cranky creaked crossly. He's a crane. That's right. Then an idea popped into Thomas's pistons. Cranky, this is Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand from Misty Island. Please tell them about the docks. I have to chuff away. I will be back very soon. And before Cranky could creak again, Thomas had steamed out of the docks. Percy was waiting for Thomas outside the steamworks. Hello, Percy. Let's play hide and seek. Your turn to hide. Percy's firebox fizzed. He liked playing hide and seek with Thomas. Make sure you find a good hiding place. Don't peep until I find you. Then Thomas raced away to the docks. Cranky was cranky. Hello, Thomas. Cranky doesn't want to talk at all. That's right. It's not my job to talk to engines. Now Thomas was cross. Cranky, you know all about loading freight. Please help Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand. I must do something important. Then I will puff back. Cranky didn't like being told what to do. He creaked and he cranked. But Thomas had already whooshed away. Thomas whirred and whooshed. Must find Percy. Must have fun. Must load freight till the job's well done. Thomas was too busy worrying and whooshing to see Percy. Percy was hiding. Percy was trying not to peep. Can't find Percy. Must go back. Must make sure the freight's on track. So Thomas raced and rattled back to the docks, where Thomas could not believe his eyes. Cranky was luring Ferdinand onto the deck of a mighty steamship. Ferdinand wasn't happy. This is not right. Thomas was upset. Cranky, what are you doing? Cranky crackled. You said, help them load freight. Thomas was horrified. I didn't mean load engines. Maybe not. You weren't here to ask. Thomas felt terrible. Unload Ferdinand now, please. Then Thomas felt worse. Cinders and ashes! 
Percy won't be having fun at all. And Thomas wished like the wind out of the docks. Thomas clickety-clacked past Percy's track. Percy? Percy! Where are you? Percy was sad. I'm here, Thomas. You didn't try to find me. You didn't play. This is no fun at all. Now Thomas felt worse than ever. The freight wasn't loaded. Bash Dash and Ferdinand would think he wasn't really useful. And worst of all, Thomas had upset his best friend, Percy. I can't do two things at the same time. Percy was puzzled. What do you mean, Thomas? Thomas thought, and he thought. Then, a much better idea flew into his funnel. Percy, we're going to have fun at the same time as being really useful. Follow me! Thomas and Percy puffed into the docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand were waiting. We can show you that really useful engines are really fun ones. Thomas and Percy puffed and puffed. First you watch, and then you wait. Then you hold your car so straight. Never hurry, take your time. One by one, you'll have a line. Then you know you've done your best. You've passed the really useful test. <laughs> we'll try our best. We'll have a bash. <laughs> we'll take our time. We'll never dash. <laughs> we'll huff and puff with all our might. Hooray for you. You've done it right. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun, Thomas. That's right. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Being really useful is the most fun of all. And even Cranky had to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs>《One of the most special places on the island of Sodor is the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Here, Captain chugs, Rocky rolls, and Harold hovers. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the rescue center. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Thomas. I have an important announcement. The engines hushed and huffed. The mayor would like some Joby Wood to build a summer house. He wants the work to start straight away. Thomas's boiler bubbled brightly. This meant a trip to Misty Island. Thomas liked Misty Island. Please, sir, may I go to Misty Island to fetch the Joby Wood? Bash Dash and Ferdinand rocked and rolled. Please, please, can we go too? We know just what to do. That's right, boss. Boss? Sir Topham Hat. Sir Topham Hat. That's right. I would like you three logging locos to stay here on Sodor to learn the ways of my railway. Thomas, you and Edward will go to Misty Island to pick up the Joby Wood. You must leave straight away. Thomas puffed proudly. We'll take the tunnel, Edward. The logging loco spluttered and stuttered. You'll need our help. Oh, Wheezy can be wild. And hee-haw is just plain crazy. That's right. Thomas was stern. No, thank you. Edward and I won't need your help. Old Wheezy and Hee Haw won't be any trouble to us. We'll show them how to be really useful. So Thomas and Edward clickety-clacked down the Misty Island Tunnel. With a huff and a puff and a whoosh of their wheels, they puffed onto Misty Island. 
Then they raced and they rolled all the way to the Misty Island Logging Station. Thomas was excited. The Joby wood gleamed and glowed in the sunshine. Edward's firebox fizzed and fluttered. Oh my! This is a very strange place. Thomas chuckled cheerfully. Don't worry, Edward. When I first chuffed here, I thought Misty Island was strange too. But now, I just think it's special. I'll show you around. Edward's wheels wobbled. Very well, Thomas. After you. So Thomas puffed proudly on. This is the zip line bridge. <laughs> and this is the sawmill. It's very noisy. This is the logging pond. It's loaded with logs. And those two are old Wheezy and Hee Haw. They're log loaders. Edward was puzzled. They're what? They're log loaders. They load logs. And they're crazy. Edward trembled on the tracks. Oh, my. Then, Thomas puffed perkily towards the Shake Shake Bridge. And this is the Shake Shake Bridge. We have to cross this, Edward, to pick up the Joby logs. Edward gasped. Don't worry, it's just a bit wobbly. So, Edward wheezed and wished onto the Shake Shake Bridge. The bridge wobbled and wibbled with every wheel turn. Trust my buffers. Then Edward stopped. He was scared. Just then, Bash Dash and Ferdinand rattled in. We thought you might need help. And it looks like you do. That's right. No, thank you. We don't need your help. We can do it alone. We'll push the log safely to Sodor and home. If you say so. And Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rolled away. Then Thomas clickety-clacked along the track to Old Weezy. I'll have these logs loaded in no time. Old Weezy wished and wheezed. He jiggled and joggled. He puffed and popped into action. Edward was worried. Oh, dear. Don't worry, Edward. You must be firm. Suddenly, old Wheezy grabbed and groaned and whirled and hurled logs everywhere. Logs bounced off Edward. Blistering boilers. And flew past Thomas. Cinders and ashes. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clacked back. Jumping Joby! It looks like you need our help now! That's right! No, thank you. We don't need your help. We can do it alone. We'll push the log safely to Sodor and home. If you say so. And Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rattled away. Thomas huffed to Hee Haw. I know Hee Haw will help us. But Hee Haw had run out of oil. It spluttered and stuttered. Thick black smoke all over James and Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, what is going on? The mayor is waiting for the Joby Wood. Edward is swinging on a bridge. Logs are jumping like frogs. And my shiny red coat is ruined. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. This is all my fault. I thought I didn't need help, but I do. And I know exactly who I need to help me. I'll fetch them now. Thomas, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clattered and chattered down the tunnel, all the way to the logging station. I was silly to think I could do this alone. I need your help. 
Looks like you do. So we're here to give it. Do as we say. And we'll show you the way. That's, That's right. right. So Thomas let the logging locos help him. Shake, shake, make me quake. Make me quake until I shake. <laughs> Edward was so surprised, he wibbled and wobbled straight off the Shake Shake Ridge. Then the logging loco showed Edward and Thomas how to catch Joby logs as they jumped through the air and bumped onto their flatbed. Finally, Dash's driver filled Hee Haw with oil. Now it could rumble and tumble logs to the cars. At last, the Joby logs were loaded. Thomas led the engines all the way back to Sodor and to the waiting Sir Topham Hatt. You are all really useful engines. Together, you are a team to be proud of. That's right! <laughs> <laughs> Thomas and Scruff. On the island of Sodor, all the engines are busy engines. But some have special jobs. Percy pulls the mail cars. Gordon pulls the express. Thomas has his branch lock. And Whiff works at the garbage dump. One morning, as Whiff was biffing and bashing garbage cars, Thomas chuffed cheerfully into Whiff's garbage dump. Good morning, Whiff. You look busy. I am, Thomas. I can't stop to talk. I have to puff round the island to pick up more cars. Then I have to shunt them back here, and it must all be tidied away by tea time. Sir Topham Hatt said so. Thomas smiled. He had good news for his friend. Don't worry, Whiff. When you puff back, you will have a helper. His name is Scruff the Scruncher. I'm going to pick him up at Brendam Docks now. Whiff wished with excitement. Are you sure? A helper for me? That's right, Whiff. Just for you. And Thomas huffed happily away to Brendam Docks. At Brendam Docks, Scruff the Scruncher was waiting for Thomas. Hello, Scruff. I'm Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Scruff was small, square, and very scruffy. Thomas liked Scruff, but he was worried. Really useful engines couldn't be really dirty ones. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Before I take you to Whiff's garbage dump, I'm going to bring you a welcome to Sodor surprise. Wait here. Scruff was puzzled. If you say so, Thomas. And Thomas steamed swiftly away. Thomas collected a flatbed full of buckets and brushes, soap suds and sponges. Being clean is being really useful. Whiff will be happy to see Scruff shine and gleam. And Thomas chuffed cheerfully back to Brendam Docks. Thomas whooshed into the docks. Here you are, Scruff. You're welcome to Sodor Surprise. With a splosh and a splash, you'll be clean in a dash. Scruff gasped. He'd never seen soap suds. And he'd never seen brushes. They looked very scary. They looked too scary. Uh, bye, Thomas. And with a clickety-clack, Scruff whooshed away down the track and was gone. Thomas was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes. Scruff's scared of being clean. I must puff after him as fast as my pistons will pump. Scruff rattled and raced down the track. Thomas puffed and pounded after him. Stop! Scruff! But Scruff didn't stop. He slipped down a siding and disappeared. Thomas huffed to a halt. 
He peered down the siding. There was no sign of Scruff. Then, Thomas saw a little puff of steam. Scruff had hidden himself behind the bushes. Scruff? Hello? But Scruff didn't answer, and he didn't come out. Just then, Gordon chuffed grandly by with the express. What are you doing, Thomas? Scruff the Scruncher is hiding because he doesn't want to be cleaned. Can you help me? Can you think of something to bring Scruff out of his hiding place? I know. Scruff, it's Gordon here. Would you like to see my express carriages? They're the grandest on the island. Thomas and Gordon waited, but Scruff didn't whoosh, and Scruff didn't wish. He didn't do anything at all. Oh, dear. Thank you, Gordon. I don't think Scruff wants to see your express. Oh, the indignity. Gordon puffed huffily away. Then Henry rolled by. Hello, Thomas. What are you doing? Scruff the Scruncher is hiding because he doesn't want to be cleaned. You're old and wise. Can you think of something to bring Scruff out of his hiding place? I think I have a very good idea. Scruff! Hello! It's Henry, the green engine here. I wonder whether you might like to come with me to get my special coal. Thomas and Henry waited. But Scruff didn't whoosh, and Scruff didn't wish. He didn't do anything at all. Bust my buffers. Thank you, Henry. I don't think Scruff wants to see your special coal. What a shame. Maybe another day. And Henry steamed sweetly away. Next, Percy puffed perkily by. Hello, Thomas. What are you doing? Scruff the Scruncher is hiding because he doesn't want to be cleaned. Can you help me? Can you think of something to bring Scruff out of his hiding place? I know. Hello, Scruff. I'm Percy. I pull the mail cars. They're red and they're wooden and they're full of very exciting parcels. Would you like to come with me? Thomas and Percy waited. But Scruff didn't whoosh and Scruff didn't wish. He didn't do anything at all. Flatten my funnel, Percy. What am I going to do? I don't know, Thomas, but I have to go. I'm late with the mail. Just then, Whiff whirred down the track, pulling a long train of garbage cars. He smiled when he saw Thomas. Hello, Thomas. I'm really looking forward to having Scruff to help me. He'll enjoy biffing and bashing all this garbage. And Whiff wobbled away. Thomas felt terrible. Cinders and ashes. I promised Whiff a helper. Now I've scared him away. Oh, because I thought that to be really useful, he had to be really clean. And all Scruff really wants to do is scrunch garbage. Suddenly, an idea popped into Thomas's pistons. Of course. I know what to do. Thomas's axles tingled and tinkled. Scruff, there are lots of garbage cars waiting for you to scrunch. Would you like me to show you them? Suddenly, Scruff whooshed out of hiding and onto the track. Scruff was ready and raring to go. First, Thomas and Scruff picked up garbage at the Sodor Steamworks. Next, they rattled to Knapford Station for another garbage car. And then, Thomas and Scruff steamed to the quarry. At last, Thomas and Scruff rattled into Whiff's garbage dump. Well done, Scruff! Then, Whiff weeshed in. Trembling tracks! You must be Scruff! And look how really useful you are already! Scruff was scruffier, but happier than ever. Pleased to be here, Whiff! Let's get scrunching! 
So Whiff and Scruff biffed and bashed. They crashed and smashed. And Thomas <laughs> laughed until his wheels wobbled. <laughs> All the indignity. Gordon is the grandest engine on Sodor. He puffs the fastest, steams the strongest, and pulls the express, which makes him very proud. One morning, Gordon huffed into the steamworks. He was grumpy. Good morning, Gordon, my friend. There's nothing good about it. The wheels on my express cars are wobbling and wibbling. And I have to be at Brendam by tea time to pick up the island inspector. No problem, Gordon. We fix wobbling wheels. Over there, please, next to Whiff and Scruff. Scruff has a scrunched scruncher. Gordon stared snootily. Whiff was whiffy. Hello, Hello Gordon. Gordon! Gordon sniffed sniffily. Hello. My name's Whiff, and this is Scruff the Scruncher. I know. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Gordon, I have a very important job for you. Of course, sir. Today is Clean Sodor Day. It will be a very busy day at Whiff's Waste Dump. Scruff's scruncher has scrunched. Whiff will wait with him here. So you, Gordon, must be in charge of Whiff's Waste Dump. Oh, what fun! Oh, what an honor! Oh, the indignity! Gordon didn't want to work at Whiff's Waste Dump. Gordon thought it was the smelliest place on Sodor. Good luck, Gordon! And Gordon huffed heavily away. Gordon steamed snootily into Whiff's Waste Dump. It was smelly. Oh, the indignity! Then, Gordon heard a worrying whistle. Bust my buffers! It's Spencer! I cannot let Spencer see that I'm working at the dump. He'll laugh till his boiler bursts. <gasps> I must hide. So Gordon shoved quickly away as Spencer slid smugly into the dump. Pumping pistons, what a pun! This is the pungiest place I've ever puffed to. Which pungy engine is in charge here? Gordon gasped and Gordon gulped. He hardly dared puff. I've left the Duke and Duchess's garbage to pung with all the rest. And Spencer steamed snootily away. Gordon puffed slowly out of hiding. Oh, the indignity! Which Pongy engine is in charge here? I am not a Pongy engine! I am Gordon, fastest and best, and pulls the express! Just then, Gordon heard another whistle. Fizzling fireboxes! It's James! I cannot let James see that I'm working at the dump! He's the snootiest Sodor engine! I must hide! So Gordon chuffed quickly away as James huffed heavily in. Whiffy woo, what a mess! This must be the stinkiest spot on Sodor. Gordon shuddered and shuddered. Ugh, only stinky steamies work here. Oh, the indignity! I'm not a stinky steamy! I am Gordon, fastest and best, and pulls the express! Now I suppose I must shunt these whiffy wagons to the garbage crusher. Just then, Gordon heard a hoot. 
flaming funnels. It's Diesel. I cannot let Diesel see that I'm working at the dump. He will tease me terribly. I must hide. So, Gordon chuffed quickly away as Diesel boiled in. Smells and bells. Only a stinky steamy could leave all these stinky freight cars here. Gordon's rods rattled. Then there was trouble. Sir Topham Hatt arrived on Thomas, with Chuff behind with Scruff. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. With's waste dump was a mess. Garbage cars were everywhere. They hadn't been emptied into the garbage crusher. And Gordon was nowhere to be seen. Gordon, where are you? Gordon shuddered with shame. Here I am, sir. But try as he might, Gordon couldn't puff out to Sir Topham Hatt. All the tracks were blocked by freight cars. Oh, the indignity. No, Gordon. Oh, the silliness. On clean Sodor Day, no job was more important than to be in charge of Whiff's waste dump. Gordon stopped huffing and heaving. Sir, I have not been a really useful engine. I thought I was too grand to work with garbage. But I was being silly. Whiff, you are a very grand and important engine. Whiff was surprised. No one had called him grand before. Don't worry, Gordon. I can help you. No, I can help you. I will shunt all these garbage wagons into the garbage crusher. Uh, please, sir, may Whiff pull the express car to Brendam Docks to pick up the island inspector? Yes, he can. Whiff thought his pistons would pop with pride. Thank you, Gordon. Right away, Gordon. Express coming through. I'll help you, Gordon. Thank you, Scruff. I'll huff and I'll puff till the whole dump is clean. You can do it, Gordon. So, Gordon heaved and hauled. Scruff shunted and shoved. It was hard, hard work. It took a long, long time. But Gordon didn't give up. Later, Whiff's waist dump was tidy and clean. Then Whiff chuffed cheerfully in with Sir Topham Hatt and the island inspector. And this, sir, is Whiff's waste dump. Whiff is usually in charge. Today, he has been helped by Gordon. Very good work, Gordon. Very good work indeed. This made Gordon very proud indeed. Whiff whistled. Scruff cheered. Hooray! And Gordon glowed. Hooray for clean Sodor Day! A job well done! I may be quite smelly, but it really was fun! Merry Misty Island! The winter holidays are a very special time on the island of Sodor. The engines always look forward to it. There are parties and presents trees and tinsel, lights and laughter. There was a lot of excitement at the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Sir Topham Hatt's office had sparkling lights, and Harold hovered happily. Christmas tree coming in! Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand puffed out of the Misty Island Tunnel. They had been working hard at the Misty Island Logging Station. Mind your funnels! Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand stuttered to a stop. 
Jumping Joby Wood! What's happening? We're getting ready for our winter holiday party. What's a winter holiday party? You make the place bright with streamers and lights. You laugh and you play. You have a great day. And you ask all your friends to the fun. Rattling rods. We never had a winter holiday party on Misty Island. Why not? We didn't know any friends to ask to join in the fun. That's right. Well, now you have lots of friends. That made Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand smile. And they chattered off chirpily to deliver the Joby Wood. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clattered into the docks. Then they gasped. Oh, me! Oh, my! There's a star in the sky! That's right. I'm getting ready for the winter holiday party. Why don't we have a winter holiday party? You don't know how to have a party. Yes, yes we, we do. do. Would you like me to help you? No, thank you, Thomas. Parties are easy. You must all come to our party. That's right. Thomas chuffed cheerfully away. The logging locos puffed to plan their party. We need streamers and stars. And bubbles and bells. Like those over there. Bash Dash and Ferdinand looked at some cars. They were loaded with decorations. Tip top! So Bash was coupled to a car. And the logging locos giggled and jiggled away from the docks. Gordon and Henry were at Marin Station. We're having a party! We'll party all night! Tell your friends to come over. Join the fun! That's right. Henry and Gordon were surprised. Would you like some help? No, no thank, thank you! you. <laughs> <laughs> Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clickety-clacked into the logging station. They were very excited. Just one thing. Where do you put bobbles and bells? And streamers and stars. The logging locos puffed, puzzled. I don't know. I know. On old Wheezy. Tip top! <laughs> Later, Old Wheezy was covered in baubles and bells. The logging locos were very pleased. We need more decorations. We must go back to Sodor. Stay here, Ferdinand, and find us a tree. That's important. Ferdinand chuffed up and down hills, through the hollow tree tunnel, and under old mills until at last he came in sight of a Christmas tree that was just right. Bash and Dash clattered back to Sodu. At the docks, Dash was coupled up to another car of decorations, and they giggled and wiggled away. Percy and Toby were at Maithwaite Station. We're having a party! We'll party all night! Tell Sir Top and Hat to come over. Join the fun. That's, That's right. right. Percy and Toby were excited. Do you need any help? No, no thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> On Misty Island, Hee Haw was now covered in baubles and bells, and streamers and stars. Bash and Dash were pleased. Tip top. Here's the Christmas tree. Oh, me. Oh, my. Ferdinand sighed. Do you think that's right? I don't know. It'll be fine with a star. That's right. <laughs> 
suddenly, the logging locos heard the hooting and tooting of engines on the track. It's party time! Sir Topham Hat and the other engines chuffed and puffed in. Welcome to the Merry Misty Island Party! That's right! Then there was trouble. Old Wheezy and Hee Haw started to cough and to splutter. Then they jittered and juttered. Baubles and bells bounced and bumped. Streamers and stars shuddered and shook. Then, Old Wheezy rocked and rolled. And the Joby Log Christmas tree flew high in the sky and splashed into the pond. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. This isn't fun at all. Bash Dash and Ferdinand were upset. We wanted to have the best party of all. But now it's the worst. That's right. We didn't want to be helped. And now it's a mess. We were silly. Will you help us now, Thomas? Of course I will. We, we all will. That's right. So Thomas helped Ferdinand choose a Christmas tree. Cranky lent Dash his star. I don't believe it. And the children gave Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand handmade decorations. They're for your Misty Island party. Later, all the engines and Sir Topham Hat were at the logging station for the Misty Island party. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand looked round. They wished with wonder and puffed with pride. Thank you all for helping us. And thank you for being our friends. You have made this the best winter holiday party of all. Very Misty Island. Island. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> Thomas's tall friend. The island of Sodor has many wonderful places to visit. Today was a special day. A new animal park was to be opened on Sodor. There were wide open spaces for the animals to live in. All the engines were very excited. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. He beamed from buffer to buffer. Good morning, Percy. Good morning, Thomas. Look at my special leaves to feed the animals. I have rosy red apples for the animals. And I am to take the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to open the park. Do you have a special, Thomas? I am to take the tallest animal on Sodor up to the animal park. Percy and Edward gasped. What is it, Thomas? It's a giraffe. All the engines wished with wonder. They had never seen a giraffe before. Fizzling fireboxes, Mr. Giraffe. You are very tall. Edward, Gordon, and Percy were puzzled. Will he blow over? Why is he so spotty? Does he sit down? Of course he'll sit down. You must wait for the giraffe keeper. The giraffe will do what his keeper tells him. But Thomas didn't want to wait for the giraffe keeper. He wanted to show the children the tallest animal on Sodor. Don't worry, Cranky. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. And Thomas puffed proudly out of the docks. 
Thomas and the giraffe puffed happily along. Children waved and whooped, and Thomas's firebox fizzed with excitement. Thomas slowed as he puffed to a low bridge. Sit down, Mr. Giraffe. The giraffe didn't want to sit down. He wanted to see the sights of Sodor. Thomas wished. Then he heard a familiar whistle. It was Gordon. He was taking the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to the animal park. Out of the way! Express coming through! I can't go under the bridge with Mr. Giraffe. This made Gordon grumpy. You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Gordon. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. So Gordon huffed huffily away. But Thomas didn't know how to make the giraffe sit down. Thomas saw some cows. They munched merrily, then lay lazily in the sun. Edward chuffed up. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Edward, can Mr. Giraffe eat some of your apples? Why, Thomas? Because then he will feel sleepy and lie down. Edward was puzzled, but he wanted to help his friend Thomas. Thank you, Edward. The giraffe liked Edward's rosy red apples. He liked them so much, he ate and ate and ate. And he didn't sit down. Edward was upset. Bubbling boilers! You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Edward. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. But Thomas was worried. Sir Topham Hatt and the mayor would be waiting at the animal park. Then, Percy puffed past. Hello, Thomas. What's the matter? Mr. Giraffe won't sit down. Can he eat some of your leaves? Then he's sure to want to lie down and sleep. Percy was happy to help his best friend Thomas. The giraffe liked Percy's leaves. He thought they were a wonderful game. Leaves flittered and floated through the air until there were none left at all. Cinders and ashes. I only wanted you to sit down, Mr. Giraffe. Suddenly, the giraffe did sit down, and he closed his eyes. Mr. Giraffe's asleep, Percy. We must steam straight to the animal park. So, Thomas and Percy clickety-clacked along the track and under the bridge to the animal park. Then there was trouble. The mayor and Sir Topham Hatt were cross. They had waited a long time for the tallest animal on Sodor. But the tallest animal on Sodor was fast asleep. Wake up, Mr. Giraffe, please! But the giraffe slept on. This is a disaster, Thomas. Thomas felt terrible. There were no rosy red apples, no juicy leaves, and no wide-awake Mr. Giraffe. I know, sir. It is a disaster. I should have waited for the giraffe keeper. I was silly to think Mr. Giraffe would do what I told him. I'll puff my hardest to the docks and bring the keeper here. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. 
The giraffe keeper was at the docks. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. All aboard! The giraffe was still asleep when Thomas puffed into the animal park. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will wake up now you're here, sir. And then Thomas chuffed away. He had a lot to do. At Farmer McCall's farm, Thomas picked up more rosy red apples. And from the orchard, more juicy leaves. At last, Thomas puffed and shoved and huffed back to the animal park. Everyone was cheering and clapping Sodor's tallest animal. Mr. Giraffe, you're awake! The giraffe heard Thomas's toot. He stretched his long neck up, 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 and then down to Thomas's face. Welcome to Sodor, Mr. Giraffe. <laughs>